these two teams kind of in the same situation. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, Golden Guardians not have a, haven't had the most favorable meta, and uh, Space Station Gaming, uh, of course, uh, having to replace their healer is probably the toughest uh, player to replace on a team. So uh, both of these teams uh, also uh, used to be, you know, top dogs here in North America, especially Space Station Gaming. I mean, they used to be the team you would always put them up there. It would be OTK, Cloud9, and Space Station Gaming. Those three were your three top dogs on any given week. Either of those teams would be the best team. But now, I'm I'm even surprised to see uh, Space Station Gaming in the circuit. To be honest, I didn't even expect them to qualify. They've had a really tough um, uh, road so far. They really just uh, had uh, that one cup success and just been riding uh, that momentum all the way into the circuit. So this is their chance to finally show what they've got. Chun is going to bring out the mage. Whisk is going to bring out the mage. And this is what I wanted to see from the Golden Gardens. I wanted to see their rogue mage paladin here. So I'm happy to see that. But um, Space Station Gaming also bringing out a couple of uh, adjustments of their own. Chun on the fire mage, huh? Yeah, I think Chun-Li <laughs> is retiring the, the Windwalker Monk. Uh, he's been playing Mage a lot on the ladder uh, with a lot of success alongside that of Wizcase. So these players are going to be tested on their Mage play now here in this best of five series. Tiki in a sap at the moment with a Polymer from the Smex and three versus one on Chun-Li, but he seems to be doing all right, having denied the combustion in that assault. Now Smexen leading the charge here with that Spear Bastion onto WizK, catching him into a Storm Bolt, trying to tear in with Chun-Li's combustion now popped, but I believe in Alter Time popped him back up to full there with the Divine Favor. Uh, Chun-Li still got combustion up, but not able to really power through for any significant cooldowns. Chun-Li pulling back to his healer here. That could be dangerous. They're going after Peekaboo, trying to utilize that intervene like and then now swapping back to WizK, Abster's position in the back line. Both teams kind of just feeling each other out within the first few minutes here. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely a surprising turn of events, but a little bit expected. Full Polymorph now on Tiki. chun -Li forced into his Ice Block, so a great setup there by the Golden Guardians to get a major objective out of the way. And uh, now chun -Li without that Ice Block going to be very vulnerable. WizK taking a little bit of pressure. Abster has just been kind of sitting in the back line Seems like Space Station Gaming, they're, haven't, they're not that comfortable to actually push in and look for crowd control. Tiki hasn't really left this pillar. So I feel like for Space Station Gaming, they might need to get a little bit more aggressive if they actually want to push the pace in this matchup. Because uh, without crowd control on Absurge, I guess they're just going to be going for a potential mana game, just the raw pressure of the Warrior and the Mage. Maybe they can force Absurge out of mana and just stay alive for a really extended period of time. I think it's a risky strategy, but maybe one they just want to go with. Kidney shot here onto Chun-Li with a smoke bomb. Tiki, where are you? You need to get in there. Chun-Li managing to get away. Looks like he might be okay as long as he can hold on to that cauterize. Still has that safety net. It gets interrupted. Big burst damage. There's a cauterize. Chun-Li on the run. Tiki gets a big divine favor heal, topping him off. But once again, Golden Guardians. Now they have two objectives. They get the ice block, they get the cauterize, they got the trinket from Tiki, and uh, they're only a few cooldowns away from winning this game. Yep, all they need to do, land one polymorph onto Tiki, try to force out, oh, never mind, they just got the sacrifice here as well now from Tiki, so just more and more pressure here. Chan has his combustion though, so I wanna see if he can go for it here and get some pressure of his own onto WizK. He's caught up in the cheap shot right now, Peekaboo doing what he can here to apply that uh, Asa Rogue pressure. WizK just pulling further and further back here away from Tiki with Smex, and now he's gonna be stuck in that Spear of Bastion. Trades out the altar time here, excellent, and he's gonna be feared up in that uh, together with Absters. Now they might be swapping over to Peekaboo here. He's completely by himself on this side of the map, but his teammates are there backing him up. Another cooldown here, checked off from the list there. Blessing of Protection being forced out, and I do believe Whiskey actually stole that one, so uh, it's still gonna be a lot of pressure coming out from Peekaboo, but it did dispel that kidney shot. Here comes the full sheep here. Where is the damage? There's the Vendetta. There's no way out of this. I don't even know if Tiki... Oh! He dispels the, the uh, Divine Favor there of Tiki, but still, it doesn't have the counter spell there, unfortunately, to combo it with, so Tiki is able to get that heal off, but this Vendetta is gonna be doing a lot of work here, and Whiskey has his combustion. The next time Chan gets kidney shot, he can literally 
literally just do a rotational combustion, and that's just going to be the game potentially. And Chan popping his combustion there now as well. Whiskey is just going to take a second behind that pillar. Now, Whiskey needs to get out there and press his combustion onto Chan. What is he doing? He's just CCing uh, smacks him behind the pillar. That was the kidney shot. That means Sean can't klepto him. And that, here we go. There's combustion now immediately being popped here onto Chan Lee. Look at that damage. This is That's exactly it. what I was talking about. He just needs to press it and just kill him with overwhelming Ooh. damage. And they are going to crack the seed there as well as Golden Guardians take game number one here uh, with the Assassination Rogue Mage Paladin versus Warrior Mage Paladin. That's weird, though, to me a little bit. Peekaboo is still playing Night Fae. Uh, I feel like a lot of other assassination rogues... Okay, okay. <laughs> I feel like a lot of assassination rogues have been going for Necro Lord um, more often, but he stayed with Night Fae. Just double-checking what his soul binds were. Maybe he just wanted to get... He, he's going to get a bit of extra mastery, but uh, the bit, it worked for him. I guess I can't complain. I mean, they were in the driver's seat. They got every cooldown. They were ahead on mana. It seemed like Space Station Gaming didn't have like a, a distinct plan. It was kind of just like, all right, Smexen, go attack WizK. Chun Li will try and help you. But Golden Guardians were doing more damage, had more control, forced more cooldowns, and it was very one-sided. I don't think there was ever a point in this game where I was like, wow, Space Station Gaming are going to be able to win this. So that's impressive because this Warrior Mage Paladin, I feel like, has been given Golden Guardians a really tough time um, throughout the cup stage. And now Space Station Gaming have tried to utilize it, but it didn't work at all uh, from my point of view. Yep, you can see the match breakdown right here as well for that game number one victory on the side of Golden Guardian's last match of the day here. Space Station Gaming going to try to be tying this one up here as we head into game number two. Don't have a win yet for this team for Space Station Gaming just yet in the circuit series. So they definitely have quite a lot to prove here heading into this game number two. And Golden Guardians wants to put themselves on match point. They're going to be fighting really, really hard for this one here heading into this next game. We're going to get that draft process started very shortly. But, uh, you know, Zico, it's it's a little unfortunate. It really goes to show like how, how monopolized Fire Mages are right now in the AWC. We've got, in your words, you know, the strongest Windwalker and then the strongest Shadow Priest, both playing Fire Mage. Yeah, I mean, Fire Mages are pretty good right now. And <laughs> it's, uh, it's I don't know, man. I, I, I'm never a big fan of that where uh, you're you're kind of forced into this alt situation, right? But it, it happens in some matchups, but uh, I don't know. I, I guess I'm just a WizK fanboy, you know? I just always want to see WizK <laughs> on his Shadow Priest, uh, seeing him on the mage uh, and, and seeing Chun on the mage, like, I feel like WizK, we've seen him a little bit on the mage. We've kind of followed his journey. He's been picking it up, you know, over time. It's not the first time we've seen him play Rogue Mage pre uh, Paladin. So it's like, okay, yeah. but Chun on the mage, really? I swear I've never we've even heard of, <laughs> I've never even heard of Chun like having a mage, you know? So it's uh, definitely a little bit surprising to see him uh, bring that out. And uh, is that Mariah Carey in the background? <laughs> Yes. I don't. I don't remember the story behind that. <laughs> I don't know what Mariah Carey thinks of the current meta right now. Uh, okay. All right. Well, well okay. the Golden Guardians got the the power of Mariah Carey behind him as well, uh, bringing them, you know, the the holiday spirit and everything. And uh, we're gonna have. Uh, I wonder what Space Station Gaming are gonna lock in here. Uh, Ellie, uh, I want to see Golden. I want to see Golden Guardians lock in the same thing. Just lock in Rogue Mage every single game, and Space Station game. You think they're gonna lock in LA Mage or uh, Holy Priest again, or what? I don't know about Holy Priest. Mm. That's the only thing I'm not sure about. Because you you don't like it, or you don't think that they they want they want to be Paladin would probably be better into Rogue Mage. I think I think Paladin for Tiki would be better. Uh, so let's just let's wait and see. But there's no way they would have picked. Unless they want to drink, they might be saying, "All right, Warrior Mage again." I just forgot to drink. This is a good map for drinking, so that's what we're gonna do. So uh, there could be two perspectives. I want to know what happened to Thugonomics. Not that Thugonomics really, I think, could fit in this matchup. I, they have Warrior Red. Why don't they just do that? I, I don't. Know. I feel like they I, I they really... smash the ladder all the time as Warrior Red. And it's like I know that's what I was saying yesterday. Just... Is it? Smexen plays that all the time. 
He plays it all the time. They're going to be locking Ooh. in Elemental Shaman Fire Mage with the Ooh. Holy Priest. So, uh, mixing it up a little bit. Um, the Holy Priest is going to provide you know some extra range offense with the Mind Games, the range stun, um, maybe maybe a bit more damage. But yeah, you're going to lose out on a lot of those immunities that are really important against an Assassination Rogue. You no longer have the Blessing of Protection. Well, I have the sacrifice, those emergency cooldowns, just not going to be available. So I'm afraid if Tiki falls behind, um, it's going to be really hard for him to recover. So that's what scares me for Space Station Gaming. But I like the fact they're mixing it up. Uh, what if maybe like maybe it sounds a bit like uh, a bit troll, but uh, I kind of wanted to see the Destro Elemental Holy Priest. I want to at least see them try that. I know it sounds ridiculous, but you know we've seen some Destro nah, robots make it work. I like it. You like it, but Zico cool. and Supertees are looking at me in disgust right now. <laughs> Come on, I just want to see some, you know, I just want to see When did it become uh, your well, shtick to just say, like, random comps that are not good? I thought that was my shtick. I don't know. I feel like I was uh, I was a little too, uh, like, rigid in my predictions, you know? So I'm just trying to spice it up a little bit, make it interesting for all the, you know, the fans watching. I, I don't know. Destro Warlock. I think Space Station Gaming, my, my favorite pick for them would have been the Warrior Ret Holy Priest. I think if they had played that, I'd be feeling really confident. Um, but we'll see if they can make this work. I mean, this is something practiced a lot. I know Zico said, you know, he Chun Li Mage kind of came out of nowhere. And it is true, but they are 3,000 rated in North America with this composition. So what? They do have <laughs> yeah. some practice with it. Yeah. Chun Li's Mage is. Ch Chun, one, Chun is 3K on his Mage. Super high rating on his, on 3K his rating Mage. On his yeah, mage. Post you can look it up. I feel like there. it's. Uh, <laughs> His mage's name is One Million IQ. I feel like Zico is. Uh, is right now? I don't know it's if it's higher, higher than, than his Windwalker. I feel no, like. Are you saying Super I feel like. No, I was asking if it was higher than his Windwalker. Uh, sorry, go ahead, Sid. Zico's like low key thinking, like, what is wrong with NA's ladder? Like, how did Chun Li get to the 3K? Like, NA ladder? Like, yikes. <laughs> that's what that's what Zico's thinking. I'm, I'm not stepping into that uh, trap. I have no comment. I played on the NA ladder, I, I so. Can... <laughs> Uh, I can see all the Europeans yeah. in chat right now in a ladder. Yikes. All right, well, heading into game number two, Golden Guardians potentially putting themselves on match point right here. We're seeing Space Station Gaming bring out this new composition. Can they pull it off here on Ash Mains? All right, let's find out. Ash Mains falling here. Full sap on Tiki. Kitty shot on to Smexin. Let's see what the 3K rated Mage Chan Lee can do here to peel this situation. Right now, he's just going to... Go ahead and try to counter pressure a little bit with these fireballs, trying to get some damage going onto Peekaboo. He's got to pop his combustion immediately to get stolen by WizK. He doesn't clap it back, so WizK is just free casting with that combustion now onto Smexin. And then he's going to have his. Uh, actually, no, they both have used their combustions already, and nobody has used any cooldowns right now. WizK uh, actually used his trinket, I believe, a little bit offensively there. So let's see if they can get something here. Kitty Shot onto Smexin. Peekaboo looking for the blind here, potentially. Not gonna go for it just yet. Doesn't wanna have that blind uh, faded or anything like that. Peekaboo getting mind controlled now by Tiki on that Holy Priest. They might stun him and actually go on him. He's really far away from Absturge if they want to. I don't know if they have it. Tiki gets blinded here by Peekaboo. He's gonna look for the restuff, trying to uh, get something. Oh, nice Dragon's Breath by Chan Li, trying to shut down the sap from happening there. His kid kidney shot comes out, Ultra Smacks him with the smoke bomb. Whiskey looking for some crowd control, not able to follow up the blind or the smoke with a sheep and that means Smexin is going to be completely fine in that situation and now it's going to be Whiskey in trouble. Oh, they still got Vendetta. Tiki, oh, fishing for a mind games. Holy Fire mind games is a big damage combo from the healer. You always got to look out for that against the Holy Priest, but Chun Li's actually getting crowd control and abster to full polymorph. Whiskey is interrupted. Peekaboo trying to peel away Smexin, getting a kidney shot with a ring of frost on Chun Li. Tiki getting step kick, but what uh, just oh. Oh. what replay? Now, <laughs> what? Look at Carl's grin. Is he Ray of Look Hope? He's not Ray of Hope, right? His grin. Well, I think Peekaboo just hit him with the biggest in Venom. No, Peekaboo was in a mind control. I'm what? not joking. What? He was literally in a mind control during the only I'm thing that could positive. have hit him. I, I don't know. Maybe. I just saw some pyroblast, maybe a hammer, or something. But Golden Guardians, they are going what? to claim game number two as well. What? Yeah. Watch the replay. I swear, Tiki I want was the mind controlling Peekaboo. I'm for it so badly. Here, all right, here we go. We're, we're gonna dive into <laughs> this one. Sick, 
Okay, but Jesus is broken. Every, every game has been very long today, and I'm, all of a sudden here, I'm just like, I'm looking at it like there's no way Smexon dies right now, and I think I like looked at a different frame and then looked back and he was dead. So Pikachu is attacking Smexon. Is he a battle master? I'm looking at his buffs. I don't see battle Doesn't, master. He gets yeah. kidneyed, right? And then Peekaboo moves over for a Vendetta. kick. It's Vendetta. Peekaboo kicks him. That was an Envenom, 100%. Oh, he got Envenom like combust. right before he got mind controlled. That has that to be. Combust at the end as well. It was both. Look, look at Whiskey. He's casting with his He uh, lost combust. like 50% of his health. In a second. Not even a second. Like, yeah, I'm thinking like there's no way he dies. Whiskey. Just pay attention to, okay. to Whiskey here. He gets Fireball. a ring on 1 million IQ. Fireball and combust. Boom. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, hey, we're gonna watch I it again. I still don't think the math adds up. I swear the math doesn't add up. I'm just yeah, watching. Watch this. I've watched this three times. Yeah, but Pikachu got mind controlled. I didn't even look like he I got a he global an off with it. Off. I think he, gets he, he had gets to have gotten a global off. He kicks Let's the see. heel. There and he envenoms right does. before he gets mind controlled yeah, by the does, pyro. He does get uh, an envenom off. I think. Maybe he, not he though. He didn't get the KB. Does it have the same animation as that Mark splash Pekka? circle? I, I, no, like he like raises his dagger like that, you know. Uh, it looks like I, I mean he it, it's the same animation as Mark for Death. I don't know if that's the same animation for um, for Envenom, but he might have he either he marked for Death or he actually got an Envenom off. But look who got the killing blow. It's Whisk. I'm telling you, Whisk just CC'd one million IQ. Boom! Biggest combust, and he just got one like ten thousand damage pyro probably. I feel like there's been some really interesting things happening uh, on today's games, like really unexpected. Um, I, I don't know. I, I'd like to see the damage. I want to see exactly what happened. I want to see the damage log uh, for that. But um, I think it was in Venom with a fireball and a power blast with a combustion. Um, but yeah, uh, it's certainly compositions you wouldn't normally expect these two teams to be playing into each other. Um, but that being said, Golden Guardians, they will take game number two. And now, once again, it's going to be Space Station Gaming's map and composition pick. The question is, do you think they're going to run this again? I feel like no. I feel like they should not. S no? Sympathies doesn't look like he's recovered from game number two. <laughs> <laughs> no, what, I, I, what do we, I want to see Warrior Ret. Why not? Yeah. Uh, Please I don't mind tell it. me why not. Uh, okay, just I want to see Marina. Necrolord Warrior, Retribution Paladin. And uh, the Holy Priest from Tiki. Not on this map. On this map? I want to. I think we're seeing... I, I think we're getting more Mage Alley action here. Well, yeah. <laughs> so the I map think. is kind of a giveaway, but... Uh, they're right, they're writing that one off. They're writing that one off. Destro Warlock. Destro Warlock. I think Thugonomics yeah, I isn't going to play. I swear I think Thugonomics, Thugonomics is not going to play. Demo Warlock. <laughs> what is up with you? you know Stop what? this. You know what I miss? You know what I miss? Thugbear. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nobody you misses sure Thugbear. Sure you do. I, I don't. Sure I, I, I do. I do. Uh -huh, those, good, uh -huh. those were simpler times. You, where's those the punchline? Where's the punchline? I don't have a punchline. I'm not very good at those. Oh, <laughs> you must be joking, though. <laughs> Look, uh, you know what? I bet Mariah Carey agrees with me. <laughs> I, I highly doubt it. <laughs> I highly doubt it. <laughs> Ma Mariah Carey loves fast-paced gameplay. That's, she probably does. You're right. There's no way she has any love for the thug bear. I'm sorry. I, yeah, I got it. I, Man. I bet if she played WoW, she'd be like a, you know, it's melee melee class or, or something like that. Uh, but we're seeing Golden Guardians lock in that same composition uh, event. I mean, yeah. I, I've, I've gone through <laughs> yeah. the, I've gone through <laughs> it all. I think at this point, Space Station uh, Gaming, I... they're going to lock it. I think they're going to lock in the LE Fire holy priest again um then we'll, we'll see if it works out better for them I, I just don't know how much i like the holy priest in this particular matchup i feel like the paladin with the ellie fire is a lot better you have that long stun hammer of justice and then you just have a lot more uh, ways to deal with the vendetta because vendetta is a crazy amount of damage for the assassination rogue when that cooldown is available and is running that's when you're going to see those big envenoms like we just saw so you need to be very careful and the holy priest doesn't have the luxury of just throwing out a bop or a sack in order to keep them alive. And that's why I think this matchup is just so unstable for the side of Space Station yeah. Gaming. Do you feel like that, that would have been a, a better matchup then, Ven? Or is that just something you, you'd rather see from Space Station Gaming? You just want to see something different? Um, well, 
I just don't know why they don't play the Rat Warrior. I mean, maybe Rat Warrior's not good, but they never play it, and I don't know why, because it seems so strong for them. Like, they opt to play Windwalker Warrior instead of Retribution Paladin Warrior. I mean, maybe Thugonomics isn't here. I, I don't know. Maybe he is. Maybe they just don't want to play that, but they're going to go at the same thing. Could make it better. I mean, honestly, that was a... I mean, all three of us were kind of like, what just happened to Smexen in game number two? So there is a chance that if they can avoid those type of one-shots, they can drag out the game a little bit longer, but... I don't know. I don't think this is the best matchup for the comp they're running. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, they've got to make something work here heading into this next game. So, so close from dropping an, just yet another series here in the circuit on the side of Space Station Gaming. They're also going to be sticking with that Holy Priest, something Super T's recommended against. Uh, what what are we lacking exactly compared to the Holy Paladin that they ran in game number one said? Well, it's just Assassination Rogue doesn't like Paladin. There's so many good cooldowns for Blind and Vendetta uh, to just immediately nullify those effects uh, to buy you time. Whereas as the Holy Priest, it's a little bit more awkward to trade those. You don't get another crowd control breaker like Divine Shield. Um, to me, the advantage of the Priest is the undispellable stun. So if Peekaboo overextends, you just stun him behind a pillar. But you could do that as Paladin too. Uh, I think in general in this matchup, Paladin would have been better. Uh, if I was an Assassination Rogue and I knew my Vendetta was never actually like fully countered it's never completely removed um you can almost just kill through a cooldown i feel like you could actually almost kill just through an astral shift if it's too late so it, it's too fragile in my mind to have the holy priest into the assassination rogue okay well golden guardians has the potential here to win this series three to zero power of mariah carey on their side let's see what they can do here in tolveron yeah, I mean, we'll see. Let's see where Peekaboo decides to open up. It looks like it will be a sap onto Tiki, and they're going after Smexin. How will Chun-Li defuse it? Looks like he will go for a Dragon's Breath, immediately dispelled there by Absurge. Quick reflexes. WizK with his Ruin of Power going to be dumping out a decent amount of damage here. Chun-Li gets interrupted on a Shifting Power. Smexin just lining up a big hit of damage here on Peekaboo. He's got it all ready to go. This is Combustion as well. I think it's Spell Storm? Was, did Chun-Li spell steal that right now? He has a combustion rolling. Decent damage here onto Peekaboo. Peekaboo looking like he's going to be okay to just charge in. He's just going for a, basically a solo play right now. Chun-Li getting controlled up by WizK. Peekaboo charging behind the pillar. It looks like Golden Guardians really want to set up for an attack. Yeah, and it's uh, looking like they're just taxing Tiki's mana right now. They got a blind ult Tiki, which he trinketed uh, in that exchange as well. Smexin still has his trinket for the smoke bomb, still has astral shift, so he's got a lot of defense. Peekaboo Ooh. taking a lot of damage right there. Say, but Light is going to proc, and he's going to have to trade out his Cloak of Shadows. Doesn't have a vanish there. He gets mind control. He gets interrupted. There's a kidney shot onto Smexin. There's a counter spell into the Hammer of Justice. Absturge in position for the Blinding Light as well. He gets it. Peekaboo doesn't play um, yeah, Night Up, so he can't actually stop that, unfortunately for him. And uh, Whisk is not in range to Polymorph. He's just standing there spamming out damage with his combustion. That was the Astral Shift there of Smexin. Peekaboo and now in one two here. There is the Trinket Sacrifice coming out from Absturge. They swap over to Absturge now. Sean, 1 million IQ here with the Combustion. Doing a lot of work here. But Whiskey does spell steal it and gets mind control on it. Sheep shot on the Tiki into full sheep. Smexin, I think this is just game over for Smexin. If they have any follow-up, if they get one more sheep, it's just over. Yeah, they don't even need it. Well, I, th I, I googled Mariah Carey quotes, and uh, one of them is, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, hopefully it's not a freight train. Uh, in this case, it's hopefully it's not Golden Guardians, because that, that, they look like a freight train in that series, uh, running at full speed. And I actually, I feel like that's got to be a good confidence boost for them moving into the rest of the circuit, something that they needed. Um, and I'm wondering what else they've got prepared for future series now. The only thing you can quote from Mariah Carey is all I want for Christmas is you. Uh, it's the only song I can even think of hers. <laughs> Just me? No, 100%. <laughs> okay. Well, regardless, let's check out game number three. And this is why I say Holy Priest is too fragile. Here, Smexen uses Astral Shift and it, it trades out effectively, but the Priest doesn't have ways to get out of crowd control unless you preempt them. So I think what ends up happening is a Polymorph just slips through. They're feeling confident here, right? Like they've got two targets, low health and the Golden Guardians. We're really far ahead. We're just mind controlling WizK. We're having a good time. Uh, but then Cheap Shot, Polymorph, 
nothing to stop it. Stun smacks in. Tiki can't do anything in a polymorph. Smexin can't really do anything while he's just isolated like this. Uh, and it just seems very easy to set up crowd control on the Holy Priest. And maybe it was just Tiki getting a little bit ahead of himself, going out there and going for those mind controls uh, and not just sticking to the pillar in line of sighting. But if he was a paladin, that could have just been Divine Shield Sack or Trinket Sack maybe, or a bop on the Vendetta so he didn't fall behind earlier on. I think the 